Look at her. Not bad. She was the embodiment of unattainable beauty, the image of perfection. As the mysterious Laura, Jean Tierney inspired the adoration of film goers around the world. She had a great presence. The minute she came on, you'd look, and wow, and she got you. Yes, she is. Off screen, she won the love of princes and future presidents. But behind the glamorous facade was a woman who struggled to keep her sanity amid a storm of personal crises and a crippling battle with mental illness. On the surface, she had everything, beauty, intelligence, talent, but on the other side of it was something very tragic. There was a girl that had everything, and everything ended up in stark misery and des despair. By 1920, America had emerged from the shadow of World War I. The jazz age was igniting, Wall Street was booming, and into this age of energy and ambition, Jean Eliza Tierney was born in Brooklyn on November 19, 1920. She was called Princess by her parents and blessed with striking looks inherited from her mother, Belle Taylor, a former gymnastics teacher. In 1916, Bell had eloped with a charming Irishman named Howard Tierney. And after Howard served in World War I, he became a successful New York insurance broker. Along with her older brother Howard Jr. and younger sister Pat, Jean was raised to obey her father without question. My father was overly strict. He was the lord and master of the house. And, um, Jean was a devoted daughter. In 1926, the Tierneys moved to Greens Farms, Connecticut, settling into a sprawling home where they were denied nothing. But behind the image of a happy family, there was tension. Jean was haunted by nightmares caused by her parents' constant fighting. She retreated into a creative world of make-believe. And by the early 1930s, the beautiful adolescent showed a gift for writing and mimicry. But Howard saw his daughter following a traditional path, ending in marriage. He did grant her one great adventure when, at 15, she was allowed to study abroad in Lausanne, Switzerland. My mother loved Europe. She really enjoyed learning the French language. She made some wonderful friends, and those were special days for her. After two exciting years, Jean returned to Connecticut. But she was stunned to find that the father she adored was now badly in debt. A lawsuit had toppled his business, and the family had lost its beloved home to a bank. But Howard Tierney struggled to keep up an image of success. And in the summer of 1938, he sent the family on a road trip to the western United States. Among their stops was Hollywood where Jean was captivated by a tour of Warner Brothers Studios. Within minutes, the gorgeous 17-year-old caught the eye of director Anatole Litvak. Dazzled by her beauty, he arranged a screen test for the astonished teen. And though she had no training, her test so impressed the studio that she was offered a contract at $150 a week. She was thrilled. I think everybody was uh, amazed. All of a sudden now, she wants to become an actress. Although Howard Tierney ordered his daughter not to accept, the determined Jean struck a bargain. After she obediently made her formal society debut, she could audition in New York for the legitimate Broadway stage. After just one month, the fantasy life Jean dreamed of became a reality when she won a small part in the play Mrs. O'Brien Entertains. And on February 8, 1939, the would-be actress made her debut on Broadway. The play was panned, but Jean won glowing notices. She was 18 years old, and I mean, she was on top of the world. She got great reviews. All the big theater critics wined and dined her. Soon, Jean won a more substantial part in the James Thurber stage comedy, The Male Animal. And on January 9th, 1940, 
The role of an ultra-modern co-ed made the fledgling actress a Broadway sensation. The first time I saw Jean was uh, in New York in a production of The Male Animal. She was so beautiful, very fresh, dew-like. She was an early Grace Kelly. One fateful night, Jean's performance captured the imagination of one of the most powerful men in Hollywood, Daryl F. Zanuck, production chief of 20th Century Fox. He said, sign that girl. Then later on that evening, he went to the store club and sees this beautiful girl oh, dancing around. He said to the man again, he said, forget Jean Tierney, sign that girl. And of course it was Jean. Happy on Broadway, Jean held out for a salary of $750 a week. Money to be held in a family corporation managed by her father. Finally, the nervous, excited actress said farewell to the stage for a fresh start in Hollywood. At Fox, she began work on a prestigious western, The Return of Frank James, opposite Henry Fonda. Mr. Woodson? Yes, ma'am? I'm sorry to bother you, but I'm looking for the man who saw Frank James killed in Mexico. My name's Elna Stone. I'm a newspaper writer. I was passing the hotel and somebody a told writer? me writer? That... You mean you write pieces for the paper? Yes. A reporter for the Denver Star. A lady reporter? Mind if I sit down? It'll be easier for me to take notes. During filming, the newcomer worked hard to improve her acting. They would run old movies for her one after another after another till midnight sometimes and with her talent for natural mimicking i think that's where she learned the most oh i don't have to work and if you must know my father's very much opposed to it he thinks i should finish college and then sit around with my hands folded waiting for someone to get around to marrying me i'll do nothing of the sort but at a preview of her film Jean shrank with embarrassment, feeling she sounded on screen like an angry Minnie Mouse. She was further pained when the magazine Harvard Lampoon named her the worst female discovery of 1940. But to Jean's surprise, the return of Frank James was a hit, and the young star moved swiftly from film to film. She began smoking to lower her voice, and in time she gained confidence on screen. Jean was very serious about becoming an actress and tried very hard not to upset anything, anybody. She did everything that was asked of her and even gave it more effort than was required. What you get from Jean Tierney when you're watching her is that there's a kind of double thing there and either or. She's very, very exotic and really unusual, but she also has a quality of typical American debutante to her. Ain't you gonna give me just a bite, love? No. Fox used Jean's mix of the exotic and the all-American in a range of roles. In director John Ford's Tobacco Road, she played a seductive hillbilly. In Bell Star, opposite Randolph Scott, she tackled the role of a western outlaw. See those leaves over there? Let's see how close you can come to one of them. You mean you want me to try and put a hole through it? Like this? Or shall I just cut it off? Like this? Jean herself was about to become a rebel. At a party in December of 1940, she met Count Oleg Cassini, a dashing 27-year-old designer for Paramount. He was European, divorced, and to the 20-year-old Jean, the most dangerous-looking man she'd ever met, and the attraction was mutual. She was better looking in life than in pictures. I mean, it was really an extraordinary genetic marvel that I was in, in front of, and I want to possess it because it was a masterpiece. By their second date, Jean and the passionate Oleg were discussing marriage. But she was anguished when her parents opposed the romance. Howard Tierney accused Oleg of being a fortune hunter and threatened to have his daughter declared mentally unstable. 